Good afternoon, everyone. This is Cynthia Guazda, Community Services Librarian at Hageman Library. So um, I'm going to share some new fiction with you uh, today that we have uh, that's hot off the press, um, just uh, came into the library, um, is available to borrow. Um, also, the library is open to the public, so you can come in. Um, our hours are um, our Monday, um, Friday and Saturday from 10 to 1 and 2 to 5, and Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday from uh, 10 to 1 and 2 to 8. So, um, and we will be open on Saturdays until our last Saturday open is um, Saturday, June 26th, and then we will reopen on Saturdays uh, beginning on September 11th, Saturday, September 11th. Um, so please do come in. Um, most library services are restored. Um, we are still um, looking at uh, making meeting rooms available to um, outside organizations, but we, um, we are um, we are open, so you can come in. You don't need to make an appointment. Um, you can just come in, use a computer, whatever you want to do. Um, so we're really excited to be able to see everybody in the library again. Um, we just opened. Uh, actually, our this is our first opening day. Today's Tuesday, June eighth, twenty twenty one. So um, we're all excited to be back open again. Um, it's been a long time, and we're excited to see everybody. Um, and um, I, I know you guys have been waiting a long time and, and we, uh, uh, we're very happy to, uh, to be back for you. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to, um, um, and we do still have our contactless services available as well. If you, um, if you have any further, um, if want any further information about our reopening, you can visit our website at www.hagaman, H-A-G-A-M, like Mary, A-N, like Nancy, library, one word, dot org. So it's www.hagamanlibrary.org. Okay, so without further ado, I'm going to share with you some of our new uh, uh, June fiction that's uh, just um, just now available at the library. Okay. So new June reads at Hageman Library. The first book that I would like to talk to you about is when Stars Rain Down by Angela Jackson Brown. The summer of 1936 in Parsons, Georgia is unseasonably hot and Opal Pruitt senses a nameless storm brewing. She hopes this foreboding feeling won't overshadow her upcoming 18th birthday or the annual Founders Day celebration in just a few weeks. She and her gran grandma, Birdie, work as housekeepers for the white widow, Miss Peggy, and, o and Opal desperately wants some time to, to be young and carefree with her cousins and friends. But when the Ku Klux Klan descends on Opal's neighborhood, the, the tight-knit community is shaken in every way possible. Parsons, Parsons residents, both black and white, are forced to acknowledge the unspoken codes of conduct in their post-Reconstruction era town. To complicate matters, Opal finds herself torn between two unexpected romantic interests, the son of her pastor, Cedric Perkins, and the grandson of the woman she works for, Jimmy Earl Ketchums. Both young men awaken emotions Opal has never felt before. That's When the Stars Rain Down by Angela Jackson Brown. Okay, and... The next book I'd like to talk to you about is Sorrow and Bliss by Meg Mason. Martha, Martha Friel just turned 40. Once she worked at Vogue and planned to write a, no, a novel, but now she creates internet content. She used to live in a, in a pied de terre in Paris, but now she lives in a gated community in Oxford. The only person she knows without a PhD, um, a baby or both, in a house she hates but cannot bear to leave. But she must leave now that her husband Patrick, the, ki the kind who cooks, throws her birthday parties, who loves her and has only ever wanted her to be happy, has just moved out. Because there's something wrong with Martha and has been for a long time, when she was 17, a little bomb went off in her brain and she was never the same. 
but countless doctors, endless therapy, every kind of drug later, she still doesn't know what's wrong, why she spends days unable to get out of bed or alienates both strangers and her loved ones with casually cruel remarks. And she has nowhere to go except her childhood home, a dilapidated bohemian townhouse in a romantic rundown part of London to live with her mother, a, min a minorly important sculptor and major drinker, and her father, a famous, though unpublished poet, while trying to survive without the devoted potty mouth sister who made all the chaos bearable back then and is now too busy or too fed up to deal with her. But maybe by starting over, Martha will get to write a better ending for herself, and she'll find out that she's not quite finished after, finished after all. That's Sorrow and Bliss by Meg Mason. The Divines by Elite Eaton. The girls of St. John the Divine, an elite English boarding school, were notorious for flipping their hair, harassing teachers, chasing boys, and chain-smoking cigarettes. They were fiercely loyal, sharp-tongued, and cuttingly humorous in the, way that, in the way that only teenage girls can be. For Josephine, now in her 30s, the years at St. John were a lifetime ago. She hasn't spoken to another divine Another divine in 15 years, not since the day the school shuttered its doors in disgrace. Yet now Josephine inexplicably finds herself returning to her old stomping grounds. The visit provokes blurry recollections of those doomed final weeks that racked the community ruminating on the past. Ruminating on the past, Josephine becomes obsessed with her teenage identity and the forgotten girls of her, of her one-time orbit. With each memory that resurfaces, she circles closer to the violent secret at the heart of the school's scandal. But the more Josephine recalls, the further her life unravels, derailing not just her marriage and career, but her entire sense of self. Suspenseful, provocative, and compulsively readable, The Divines is a scorching examination of the power of adolescent sexu sexuality, female identity, and the destructive class divide, exposing the tension between the lives we lead as adults and the experiences that form us. Eaton probes us to consider how our memories as adults compel us to re-examine our past. That's The Divines by Ellie Eaton. The Hour of the Witch by Chris Bajoilian. Boston, 1662, Mary Deerfield is 24 years old. Her skin is porcelain, her eyes deaf, uh, deaf, deaf blue, and in England, she might have had many suitors. But here in the New World, amid the community of saints, Mary is the second wife of Thomas Deerfield, a man as cruel as he is powerful. When Tom is prone to drunken rage, drives a three-tined three fork into the back of Mary's hand, she resolves that she must divorce him to save her life. But in a world where every neighbor is watching for signs of the devil, a woman like Mary, a woman who harbors secrets, desire, secret desires and finds it difficult to tolerate the brazen hypocrisy of so many men in the colony, soon becomes herself the object of suspicion and rumor. When tainted objects are discovered buried in Mary's garden, when a boy she has treated with herbs and, and simples dies, and when their servant girl runs screaming in fright from her home, Mary must fight to not only escape her marriage, but also the gallows. A twisting, tightly plotted novel of historical suspense from one of our greatest storytellers, Hour of the Witch is a timely and terrifying story of socially sanctioned brutality and the original American witch, witch hunt. That's The Hour of the Witch by Chris Bajalian. The Slaughterman's Daughter. Slaughterman's Daughter by Yaniv Iskovitz. With her reputation as a, as a ville de chaya, Fanny Kaisman isn't like the other women in her, in her, um, in her slat in the in the palais of in the pale of settlement certainly not her obedient and anxiety ridden sister mendy whose philosopher of a husband zavi Meyer, has run off to mink mink minx abandoning her and their two children as a young girl fanny felt an inexorable pull toward her father's profession of ritual slaughter and under his reluctant guidance become became a master with a knife 
And though she long ago gave up that unsuitable profession, she's now the wife of a cheesemaker and a mother of five. Fanny still keeps the knife tied to her right leg, which might come in handy when heedless of heedless of the dangers facing a Jewish woman traveling alone in Tsarist Russia, she sets off to track down Zavimir and bring him home. With the help of the mute and mysterious ferryman Zazak Breshov, an ex-soldier with his own sensational past. Yaniv Is Iskovitz spins Yaniv Iskovitz spins a family drama into a far-reaching comedy of errors that will pit the Tsar's army against the Russian secret police and threaten the very foundations of the Russian Empire. The Slaughterman's Daughter is a rollicking and unforgettable work of fiction. That's The Slaughterman's Daughter by Yaniv Itzkovitz. Folklore by Angela Me Young Herb. Elsa Park is a particle physicist at the top of her game, stationed at a neutrino observatory in the Antarctic. Confident she's put enough distance between her ambitions and the family ghost she's run from all her life. But it isn't long before her childhood imaginary friend, an achingly familiar spectral woman in the snow, comes to claim her at last. Years ago, Elsa's new, now catatonic mother had warned her that the, that the women of their line were doomed to repeat the narrative lives of their ancestors from Korean myth and legend. But beyond these ghosts, Elsa also faces a more earthly fate, the mental illness and generational trauma that run in her immigrant family, a sickness no less ravenous than the ancestral curse her, haunting her. When her mother breaks her decades-long silence and tragedy strikes, Elsa must return to her childhood home in California. There, among fam family wrestling with their own demons, she unravels the secrets hidden in the handwritten pages of her mother's dark stories of women's desire and fury, of, of magic suppressed, stolen, or punished, of the hunger for vengeance. From, from, Sparks, from Sparks Fellow, the house alumna, and Harvard graduate Angela Myung, her folklore is a wondrous and necessary exp exp exploration of the mess we inherit and those we fashion for ourselves. That's called Folklore by Angela Me Young Her. Great Circle by Maggie Shipstead. After being rescued as infants from a sinking ocean liner in 1914, Marion and Jamie Graves are raised by their dis di dissolute uncle in, in Missoula, Montana. There, after encountering a pair of barnstorming pilots passing through town in beat up biplanes, Marion commences her lifelong affair with flight. At 14, she drops out of school and finds an unexpected and dangerous patron in a wealthy bootlegger who provides a plane and subsidize her, subsidizes her lessons, an arrangement that will haunt her for the rest of her life, even as it allows her to fulfill her destiny, circ circumnavigating the globe by flying over the North and South Poles. A century later, Hadley Baxter is cast to play Marion, in a film that centers on Marion's disappearance in Antarct Antarctica, vibrant, canny, disgusted with the claustrophobia of Hollywood, Hadley is eager to redefine herself after a romantic film franchise has imprisoned her in the grip of cult celebrity. Her immersion into the character of Marion unfolds thrillingly alongside Marion's own story as the two women's fates and their hunger for self-determination in vastly different geographies and times collide. Epic and emotional, meticulously researched and gloriously told, Great Circle is a monumental work of art and a tremendous leap forward for the prodigiously gifted Maggie Ship Shipstead. Well, that's The Great Circle by Maggie Shipstead. Red Island House by Andrea Lee. People do mysterious things when they think they've found paradise, reflects Shay, the heroine of Red Island House. When Shay, a Black American professor who's always had an adventurous streak, 
Mary Senna, an Italian businessman, she doesn't imagine that her life's greatest adventure will carry her far beyond their home to in, in Milan to an idyllic stretch of beach in Madagascar where Senna builds a flamboyant vacation villa. Before she knows it, Shay has become the somewhat reluctant mistress of a sprawling household caught between her privileged American upbringing and her connection to the continent of her ancestors. At first, she's content to be an observer of the passionate affairs and fierce rivalries around her. But over 20 tumultuous years of marriage, as she and Senna raise children and establish their own rituals at the house, Shay finds herself drawn ever deeper into a place where a blend of magic, sexual intrigue, and transgression forms a modern day parable of colonial conquest. Soon the collision of cultures comes right to Shay's door, forcing her to make a life altering decision that will change her and Senna's lives forever. A captivating, powerful, and profoundly moving novel about marriage and loyalty, identity, and freedom. Red Island House showcases an extraordinary literary voice and an extravagantly lush, enchanted world. And that's the end of our, of our little book talk for um, new adult fiction novels um, available now for uh, June 2021. Um, if you'd like to put any of those on hold, you can call the library at 203-468-3890 um, to put them on hold. You can come in and, um, and uh, take a look at um, and browse our collection um, if, you're, if you're just interested in um, some of the genres mentioned. Um, um, so you, um, you can contact us about putting these uh, titles on hold. Um, or come visit us um, and we can help you find them. So uh, please do uh, please do visit us. We've missed everybody and we're excited to be back um, open. So please come and visit, uh, we've missed everyone. Um, so um, without further ado, I'd like to, to thank all of you for listening to me um, talk about new fiction today. And um, I hope to see you all soon at the library. Have a great day. <laughs>